Today, I want to talk a little bit about IBC, or inter-blockchain communication. You see, IBC is a term that's being thrown around a lot right now, and I want to kind of unpack it and explain the different levels of IBC and what this means for EOS moving forward. You see, IBC itself is a very broad term that covers a lot of different implementations. At its most basic form, inter-blockchain communication allows you to take a token from one blockchain and transfer it to a completely separate blockchain very seamlessly. Now, BOSS, which is an EOS fork, just recently came out and announced that they have enabled this IBC two-way peg. What's unique about the peg is that it actually allows decentralized token transfers from one chain to the other versus a more centralized implementation like BitPi's eBTC, EETH, and EUSD token peg implementations on EOS. So that is the simplest form of IBC and is the main one that's in use today, whether it's the EBTC, EETH, and EUSD pegs from BitPi or the more decentralized EOS pegs from the BOSS team. But what is... IBC in its grand form. What is IBC from the standpoint of a scaling solution that will allow us to scale EOS infinitely to any point that we want to support any amount of users and dApps that we want? Well, that's what's called native sidechain scaling using IBC, and it requires the same block producers on all different sidechains as are on the EOS mainnet. This is a version of IBC that, unlike the pegs, does actually not exist yet, which is why there is so much confusion around the side chains that exist today, which are really just forks. Now, I have nothing against these forks that are trying out different experiments in governance or token distribution or whatever the case may be on their own individual chains, but I think it's very important that everybody understands the difference between a pegged IBC and a full native sidechain, which simply allows for more throughput on the EOS mainnet. You see, I see a vision where the EOS mainnet is the hub of thousands of different native IBC chains that simply allow for more throughput, that allow for more dApp experimentation, and allow for all of these things in one connected network versus the implementation that's happening right now, which is a bunch of separate forks that all have their own individual tokens to make their networks work. While these definitely have a place and are definitely useful for running experiments and things like that, it's my belief and the belief of many others that native IBC is what will scale the EOS mainnet and make it more successful in the long term. So I hope this video clarifies for you the two different types of IBC that are thrown around today. We have the simple peg swap, like BOSS has implemented and EBTC and these other coins have implemented, and then we have a more native sidechain IBC that's designed to scale the EOS mainnet and scale one existing chain versus fragmenting it into a bunch of different forks. So when you hear IBC next time thrown around in Telegram, thrown around in a chat, be sure to ask what that person means by IBC, because generally people are using the same word, but with different meanings and different definitions, and it can get a little confusing. So I hope that clarifies it for you, but if it didn't and you still have questions, please join us in our Telegram at t.me slash cypherglass, and we'll do our best to answer any questions you have and also bring in other experts who may be able to answer them as well. So until next time, go EOS.